Hello, my name is Ronald Kim, and welcome to the first text sample of Classical Armenian. Our first text sample is atypical of Armenian literature. Thanks to a passage in Moses Khornatsi's History of the Armenians, Patmut Hyun Hayots, we have preserved here one of the only survivals of pre-Christian literature of pre-Christian Armenia. This poem relates the birth of Vahagan. We have here the Armenian original, transliteration, and English translation. Heaven was in travail, earth was in travail, even the Red Sea was in travail. Erkner Erkin, Erkner Erkir, Erkner Eutzoun Tsirani. It is clear that we're dealing with a lot of alliteration here. We have the form Erkner, which is an imperfect third singular of the verb Erknem, to give birth, to be in birth pangs. Erkin, the first subject, is heaven, usually occurs in a plurale tantum form as Erkinak, as in English, the heavens. The next subject, Erkir, is earth. And notice the very nice alliteration there. The two words are almost homophonous. Then we have Erkner, Eu, and, or in this case also, to, Sovin Tsirani. N is the article, so is C, Tsirani, purple or deep red in this case. The birth pain also held the red reed in the sea. Out of the reed came smoke, out of the reed came a flame, and out of the flame jumped a blonde-haired little boy. Erkenitsawun uner eu skarmarik elegnik. Erken is birth pangs. This is the basis of the denominative verb that we just saw, erknem to be in birth pangs. Erken e so wun in the sea. So we have e followed by the locative. In this case, so wu because so is a u stem. So in the sea. The birth pain in the sea held eu also. And now we have a z. That z is going to mark a definite a Accusative, a definite object. In this case, karmarik elegnik. So we have first karmarik, which is a diminutive of karmir. So red, reddish, little red. Elegnik also ends in ik, and this too is a diminutive of elegan, reed, a little red reed. The birth pain also held the red reed in the sea. Und elegan po is repeated in the next two lines. Und means through. It is a preposition that takes the accusative. So literally through the reed, although in English we would probably say out of the reed. Elegan pole, through the shaft pole of the reed. Literally through the reed's shaft. So genitive modifying accusative pole shaft. Through the shaft of the reed, through the reed's shaft, one could say simply out of the reed. Und elegan po zuch elaner. Elaner shows the same ending as erkner, which we saw on the previous slide. This is an imperfect third singular of the very important verb, right, elanem, to go out, to exit. So we have two different things coming out of the shaft of the reed, through the reed's shaft. Zuch, which is smoke, and then bots, flame. Out of the reed came smoke, out of the reed came a flame. And we're going to see that word bots once again in the next line. Eu e botsoin. Now we've just seen that construction in the first line here, right? That is e plus locative. In this case, bots is an o stem in contrast to tso, c which is a U stem. So the ending is different, it's oi. And out of the flame jumped vazer. That's an imperfect third singular of the verb spring or jump, vazem. Khartyash patanekik. Khartyash means blonde or red haired, light color hair. And patanekik is interesting because it too is a diminutive. In fact, it's a double diminutive. Patani is boy. If you add the diminutive suffix ak, you get patanyak. And then you add a second suffix ik. 
So you get pata ne kik. Know this with weakening of ya to e. So that ekik actually is a double diminutive. You're noticing a lot of diminutives in this poem. Finally, the last stanza. Nahur her uner, bots uner morus, el ach kunuk ein arga kunuk. He had fire for hair, flame he had for a beard, and his little eyes were suns. Na is the most common way of expressing the third person singular uh, pronoun. So it means literally that one, he or she, there being no grammatical gender. In this case, it's, well, it's the boy, so he. He had uner, that's an ending we've already seen several times, imperfect third singular of unim, have. So he had fire hair. Right. There's no translation here of for or as. He had fire hair, hur hair. We've already seen the word bots, meaning flame, and we've seen uner. So is bots subject or object? Well, you can't tell because in the singular, nominative and accusative are the same for all nouns in classical Armenian. But it's clear that the boy had something. He had fire for hair. Flame he had for a beard. So we have two objects once again. Flame he had, beard. Morus is accusative corresponding to moruk in classical spelling, mauruk. Notice that we have the later o monophthonized from au. And this means beard, it only occurs in the plural. Eu ach kunuk ein arga kunuk. Ein is, once again, an imperfect of the verb m, b. So something was something. Achkunuk is an interesting form. Why? It seems to be a contamination of two different plurals. Achk, eyes, and akunuk, sources. This is interesting because both of those nouns have the same singular form. They're differentiated in the plural by sense. So what is this form? Others say, no, this is actually some kind of diminutive of eyes, and that's the translation that I have adopted here, his little eyes. Perhaps we're dealing with a play on the words, because you'll notice that the next word is arga kunuk, and this means sons, but in fact, it's a compound originally. Areg is the old genitive of the word for son, and akunuk, well, we've just seen that form. That's the plural of source, so sources of the son clearly a reference to some kind of pre-Christian beliefs about the sun. But here it seems that his little eyes were suns. Needless to say, this tantalizing piece of pre-Christian poetry uh, has been analyzed from the point of view of stylistics. The late Calvert Watkins uh, identified repetition of the verb by periphrasis with verbal noun and semantically empty auxiliary verb. What does that mean? Well, in the first stanza, we have twice erkner. That's the verb itself for to be in birth pangs, to be in birth travail, right? Erkner, erkner. And then in the second stanza, erken uner, right? Travail or birth pain also held. So you're using the noun, that's the basis of the verb erkner, with the semantically empty verb have. And this is a pattern that Watkins was able to compare with other older Indo-European languages. Uh, we have an example from Latin, ustrandi, ustri que faciendi, right? So expiating and making an expiation. In Umbrian from the famous Igiban tables, right? Was et om est, was est, has been flawed, right? Is a flaw. And finally from ancient Greek, this is from a play of Aeschylus, right? Erai, Eros lambane, right? The first is a verb to, you know, is desirous, right? And then we have eros, desire, takes. There are many other stylistic features uh, on display in this short, but clearly uh, old poem. We have alliteration as already referred to. Erkner was in birth pains, followed by erkin, heaven, which, note, is not etymologically related to erken, birth pangs. We have a play on words here. And then the nearly homophonous erkir, earth. So we have all these forms in a row with 
the same sequence, Eric, 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 Eric. We have discourse initial, Eric Nair. That's not typical of classical Armenian word order, as we've already seen in the videos on syntax. So having the verb here at the beginning is clearly marked pragmatically, and that's repeated three times in the first stanza, therefore clearly done on purpose, right, as a stylistic device. Repeated diminutives, as seen in the second stanza, karmarik, elegnik, and then the double diminutive in patanekik, also, by the way, creates an alliterative effect with a final ik, ik, ik. Finally, the mysterious form, achkunuk. Is it a diminutive? Is it a literary creation for a rhyme effect, since the following word was aregakunuk, little sons, right? So this was a play on words. His little eyes were like little sons. Well, it's not totally clear. So even this small piece of pre-Christian poetry, which we owe to Moses Khornatsi, right, can tell us some interesting things about the poetic devices that were at work in pre-Christian Armenian literature, uh, some of which may in fact be of Proto-Indo-European origin. Shnor Hakalutun, thank you for your attention. This concludes the first text sample.